Hello everyone, my name is Dina Redinger and I am going to be your facilitator and host today because my co-host Sharon Weinstein is out speaking on tour today. So it's a warm welcome to this LinkedIn Live Healthcare's Authors Tour um, with myself obviously and Sharon if she was here. It's really around interviewing the authors of this book called Healing Healthcare. These are evidence-based strategies to end our broken system. And this book is packed with solutions to the problems that plague our healthcare system today. The issues that lead these troubling sentiments amongst our nurses. Nurse leaders share their experiences, their thoughts, their evidence, their strategies to ensure the health of the healthcare. What you find within our interviews, and we will do these weekly, Thursdays at 12 noon Central Standard Time, we want you to walk away with some pearls from these people who are our authors of our book, Healing Healthcare, that is going to bring you the evidence that they have to help just eliminate this need for people to suffer in silence. We want to really bring these forward. So we want to get this book into the hands of those making those decisions. But before we start, we want to acknowledge you and we want to thank you for joining us because we have viewers across the globe and we want you to let us know and you can also chat in with us. And we also want to record this so that you can replay it. But I want to invite in my special guest today, Anne Llewellyn. So I want to say welcome to you, Anne. Thank you, Dina. It's great to be here. So glad you're here. And your chapter is a very important one. It's talked about taking care of you. And you are a nurse advocate, a digital, digital journalist, and has been a leader in case management and was the president of the Case Management Society of America from 2003 to 2004. She was awarded the organization's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2015. She's the founding member of the Patient Advocate Certification Board and developed and launched the very first national certification in patient advocacy in 2012. You're a powerhouse, Anne, so we want to thank you for joining us today. <laughs> thank you, Dina. It's really good to be here. And um, that's probably one of the reasons why we do need to take care of ourselves, because we all are leaders uh, in our own right. And we all are people who are really trying to improve a system that is truly broken today, the healthcare system. And it's so multifactorial that mm -hmm. it's that's what's so challenging about it. Right. But yes. if we as the leaders can really do our own part, each of us individually and collectively to help improve that patient experience, mm -hmm. the physician role, the nurses role, they all the other members of the healthcare team, we all have to work together and we have to be healthy in order to do that. Yeah. And that first statement in your chapter was like one that just kind of just stuck me right in my heart because you said, quote unquote, if you don't take time to take care of your wellness, you will be forced to take care of your illness. And I want to speak to that, especially for nurses in the healthcare system today, because you talk a lot about kind of the incivility of the environment because it's very stressful. You know, so how would you tell nurse leaders, you know, to make sure to take care of your wellness? What are some of those things? And talk a little bit more about that because you've got a lot of great stuff. Thank you. Well, you know, I think it's just important that we're aware of our own health and how that can impact our work, our life, really our life. Because, you know, if you have children and you get sick, you know, your children are impacted, your husband's impacted, your livelihood can be impacted. And so taking care of yourself, getting, going to the doctor, don't put it off, getting those routine tests, your breast mammogram, your, your, you know, your GYN annual physical. If you have any problems that pop up, don't just put it off because you're too busy. We take care of people who put off their own health care and are now entrenched in the healthcare system with chronic medical conditions. Mm -hmm. And we are just as susceptible as any of them to illness. So exercising, eating right, getting enough sleep, uh, doing stress management. We have stressful jobs. We have to learn how to manage that stress. And, you know, 
So we can't put it off and we have to identify it. As my water aerobic teacher said, we have to own it. Mm -hmm. And we have to own it and we have to do what we can to address problems and prevent issues. You know, right. we've all been on airplanes where we've heard the stewardess say, you know, if we have a drop in cabin pressure, the masks are going to drop down. Put your own mask on first. Not because we're selfish, because we can't help anybody if we're not well. Yep. And it goes yep. through the whole thing from your family to your patients to your employer. Um, so that's why I think that statement was so important. It is very, very important. And you talk in your chapter about this unmanaged workplace stress. You know, um, I don't know if you can speak to some of the statistics, but it's very striking. And we, we talk a little bit about if we don't get our hands wrapped around fixing this broken healthcare system right now, you know, humankind will suffer. It will suffer because yeah, we and we're part of that humankind. We yeah. are part of it. Um, so yeah, that that statement, and I don't have the paperwork in front of me to see where it came from, but it was a quote because um, you know there's so many incidences, and I just read something an ER nurse was stabbed by a patient the other day. It, it's every single day we're hearing something out of Becker or MedPro, or any of the different online e-magazines and the statistics. Violence in hospitals is serious. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all at risk for that if we're working in hospitals, in doctor's offices, in insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Most insurance companies don't put their addresses out there because they don't want people to come to their office and shoot it up because they couldn't get good insurance. So mm -hmm. people are at their wits end. The average public is at their wits end. And there's some people who turn to violence when that happens. So unmanaged stress, unmanaged problems, it's because we're not expecting them. But most hospitals have disaster protocols, which include active shooters and people who might come in and threaten the staff. Mm -hmm. You should make sure your hospital has policies and procedures. And we all know what to do. We have that button we can push and have the police come in case we have an incident where we need police protection. So look at your systems, look at your own systems to make sure your staff is safe and what to do in case something happens. Review those policies because we are all, and we've all seen the mass shootings in schools. We've seen the shootings in movie theaters. We have a um, park near our house and they have a monthly, um, it's called Rock the Park, and they have a monthly outdoor open air theater where musicians come and play. And I never thought of it before, but I thought this, will, I, this is how sick it is. This will be a per perfect place for an open shooter to come. Right. We're all there, we're drinking wine, we're sitting on lounge chairs, we're listening to this great music in a community mm -hmm. atmosphere. Right. I, yeah. I've been nervous to go this year because right. of what's happening in this world. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think we can take it for granted just because, and I know myself as a nurse, I worked in the ER in an inner city hospital in Philadelphia early in my career, thought nothing of walking to my car at two o'clock in the morning and getting into my car in a dark parking lot, thought nothing of it right. because I was a nurse and who was going to hurt me? Yes. We're getting, we're getting hurt today. So right. we, we need to be careful. Yeah. What one tip would you give a nurse leader? You talked a little about reviewing policies and process and procedures. You know, is there any other tidbit you could probably share for a nurse leader or somebody that is, you know, a leadership in a system that, you know, you want them to take away from your chapter that you wrote in yeah, this book. Look at your staff, talk to your staff. How are they doing? You know, as a director of nursing, as the director of health system, the physicians, the nurses, we have all the data, right. it's out there. Everybody is stressed. Everybody is on edge, the consumer as well as the staff. So start talking to your staff about it finding out. I was at the HIMSS conference a couple of weeks ago 
and I went to a, one of the sessions was on nursing informatics and three nurses who were in the final for the nurse, they call it the nurse pitch award. And this was three nurses who were doing uh, studies in staffing patterns and how to help hospitals uh, have adequate staff for the type of patients they have, the acuity. I think that's what we always looked at. How many patients do we have? Mm -hmm. What's their acuity? Now we're looking at what's the staff's competence to take care of those patients. Mm -hmm. And one of the examples, the neonatal nurse or the labor and delivery nurse calls out sick because she is sick. They're left with one short nurse and they have five patients in labor. They don't have, how can they get a nurse, a competent nurse mm -hmm. to be there to, and how much is that going to cost? The right. hospital to get that nurse there mm -hmm. so we're looking at costs we're looking at competency we're looking at acuity we're looking at needs and you know there's just so much so embrace health information technology if that's mm -hmm. something that you can get involved in in your organizations it's out there and the more information you can gather the better systems you can design to meet yeah. those challenges so that would be one tip, the health, health information technology and what you're, where you are in that, I'll say, race to get health information technology into your system right. to help solve some of these problems. Right. Yeah. Um, also, again, talking to your staff, have staff meetings, not so much about policy and procedure, but just how people are doing. Show right. them that you care. Yeah. And, you know, we have to look at you know, maybe people do need a day off. Take mm -hmm. a vacation. We're, we we can't take vacation. We're short. We we will get help. You plan your vacation. The whole right. step. We need to take time off to sit back, relax, reflect, have fun with our families. You know, and I I've said this to you and Sharon both before. I think what's changed in healthcare, especially from nursing, from my perspective, is that we don't have fun anymore. We used to have fun as mm -hmm. nurses, even as busy as we were. Mm -hmm. I remember being in an ICU, six patients, all on ventilators, critical patients. But, you know, we had a radio there. We'd have the Saturday night dance party. And we'd be like in between. Not that we didn't take care of our patients, but we, oh, I love that song. And everybody would like stop and listen to it for a minute. And it brought back good memories. I mean, yeah. things like that, that we can reflect on, that we can mm. work on, just to chill a little bit. And so those are the things I think important things. And what is unique to your organization, the yeah. leadership, to really recognize how hard your staff is working. Mm. And the, the time and energy and passion, mm -hmm. if they're not, putting that in, something's wrong because that's always what we do, what we did and taking good care of patients. So we have a lot of data today to examine these things. And I think if you can get your IT people to, and maybe some specific questions that you have about your team, start to use that data to right. really look at the health and wealth of your um, staff. I love that. You got to start someplace. Just yeah. start. Start, yeah, you know, start. Final, just start. Yeah. Final question for you, Anne. Um, why did you want to be a part of this journey in, the, in our book on healing health care? Well, you know, because I'm passionate, I'm on my way to retirement and I've had a great career and I feel so passionate about nursing and so worried about the profession that when mm -hmm. you and Sharon approached about this and i think i might have saw it on a post on linkedin that you were doing this i thought i would like to contribute to it because that's going to be my legacy as i leave the profession is to leave that hope that we all are very important to this industry to our patients right and um just to leave some words that maybe will help one person one department one nurse leader to really, they're they're in they're under unmanageable stress. Right. You know, 
you know, from the top to the mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom, they were really stressed. So right. we all need to work together to keep this system. And you know, depending on what happens to it, we're going to be there to pick up the pieces because that's what we do as nurses. That's but right. I don't want to leave it with doom and gloom either. I think there are a lot of wonderful staff out there. You know, mm -hmm. I remember Don Berwick used to say that. It's not the individual people in the system that are causing the problem. It's the system. System. And that is what's broken is the system. Right. So we have we have the knowledge, we have the expertise, we have the know-how mm -hmm. to really in our own individual units make a difference with that improving that system. Mm -hmm. Thank so you for sharing. Do it. And I'm really anxious to see the rest of the chapters because I think it's going to give I so think. much support and so much yes. i think every hospital should buy it for their nurse their nurse leadership mm -hmm. or actually the whole leadership the whole c-suite yes should read the book because it's yeah. it's a team effort and it and it all needs to be looked at so i hope the book does well yes I hope people take the time to read it because yeah. this is all we're seeing this so much in the news and the, right. in yep. the literature that it really is an important time. And yep. again, my, my, as I move into retirement and nursing, that new nurses come into nursing and don't get burned out. Right. There's so many different fields that you can go into. Right. Uh, you know, I always promote getting that basic training, mm -hmm. five years, four years, yep. med surge, med surge, just so you really know what you're doing. And then moving into if it's leadership or if it's into another specialty area. But mm -hmm. don't give up because this nursing is a wonderful profession mm -hmm. and it can take you. I, I've been a nurse since 1973 as an LPN and it's 2024 and I'm still in it and trying to get out. Now, I don't really want to, but I really feel like it's time to turn the reins over to yeah. this next generation and they're they're really out there it's just so amazing to see up and coming leaders and their power and passion yes that i feel it's okay to step back because the that. industry is in good hands yeah. but we yes. all need to work together i love that and i think that was the power you know we built this book on the interviews that we did last year and, and sharon and i sat back and said oh my gosh these these people these incredible leaders they have already vetted the evidence right so bringing solutions to the table into one resource being able to collectively come together to help people navigate some of those tough situations because we don't want you to give up we do care about you mm -hmm. and we want to help to you to be able to continue to go forward with confidence and taking care of yourself so i wanted to thank you Anne, as we come to a close today in an invitation for anyone to join us every thursday at 12 noon for healing healthcare and signing off. Thank you, Anne, for joining us today. Okay, thanks, Dana. Tell Sharon I said hi. I will.